In this video, I'm going to talk about solving uh, solving an equation in algebra. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be writing the justifications for each one of these steps. Uh, so this is the beginnings of doing algebraic proofs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite this. 1 half t plus 5 is equal to negative 7. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this equation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it. Now this is something that everybody can do. If you're watching this video, you should be able to solve this. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve it, and then we are going to um, basically make the justification for each one of these steps, uh, basically writing the reasons why we can do each one of these steps. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, subtract 5 from both sides, and now that what that will give me is 1 half t is equal to negative 12. Notice that these add to get zero, so that kind of goes away. I got nothing there. Negative 7 and a negative 5 make a negative 12. All right, so there's my first step. There's my first step that I took. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep solving. Now I see this 1 half here, and a lot of you are thinking, okay, 1 half. 1 half is multiplying times a t, so I need to divide by 1 half. Divide by 1 half. Now, the tricky thing about this is we don't really know how to divide by 1 half. That's kind of tricky. Now, the left side over here, that's not really that tricky at all. It's just 1 half divided by 1 half. That's going to cancel, and all you're left with is t. But over here, negative 12 divided by 1 half, that's, that's a little tricky. So instead, we're going to try something a little bit different. Instead, we're going to try something just a little bit different. So give me a moment to get rid of some of these. Um, now, what we're going to do differently is instead of instead of oh, excuse me instead of multi or excuse me dividing by this one half here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to multiply times two. Okay, we're going to multiply times two on both sides. Now, multiplying times two right here will cancel everything, and all I have left is the t. And then I, whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I'm going to multiply by times two on the right side also. Okay, so I'm going to have t equals negative 24. Okay, so that's a little bit easier to see. All right, so those are the steps that I did. Notice the steps that I have I left in red. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back, and now we're going to justify those steps. What did we do during those steps? Okay, so here we go. My, my first justification, this first line, this was given to us. Now, whenever you're doing proofs, if anything is given to you, if anything is ever given to you, that's going to be the first line of your proof. This was given to us. All right, then now from the given statement, I go down to my next step. How did I get there? How did I get from this first line to this second line? Well, right here, I subtracted 5 from both sides. So this would be the subtraction, subtraction property of equality. So notice the abbreviations that I'm using. Property. This is, pro this is the word property, abbreviate, of equality. We just use an equal symbol for equality. Okay, so that's the first statement. That's the, what, that's the reason why I could do the first one. Now the next step, I go from line 2 here down to line 3. Line 2 to line 3. What did we do here? Well, left over is my multiply times 2. So this was the multiplication property, again, abbreviating property of equality. Okay, multiplication property of equality. Okay, so those that's that's it. We solved the equation and we also wrote the justification for each one of the steps that we took. And that's it. That's kind of the beginnings of your algebraic proofs. All right, now moving on, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, another another proof, but uh, this is more, this is kind of tiptoeing into the geometry aspect of doing proofs. Okay, so solving an equation in geometry, notice these are, these, this is, we got a geometric shape over here. I know it's kind of odd to say that a line and a couple of segments, the, those are geometric shapes, very simple ones, but they are geometric shapes. So we have a small segment here, which is 2x. We have another small segment here, which is 3x minus 9. And then we have a large segment here, which is 4x minus 4. So notice over here, everything's kind of spelled out for us. We have NO, which is the big segment. Then we have NM, which is this small segment here on the left. And then we have MO, which is this small segment here on the right. Notice that we're adding both of these small segments to get the larger segment NO. Okay, now when I look at that, 
And this this is a little bit different from the last proof. The last proof I said your first line has always been given. Well, this first line isn't really given to us. This is the first line in the proof, so I actually have to have a justification for this step. So what I need to do is I need to think back, what am I actually doing here? So I'm taking a small segment plus a small segment, adding those together to get a larger segment. So this is this is going to be segment, segment, addition, addition, postulate. Okay, now the segment addition postulate is something you probably learned a while ago, um, but it's still relevant to this day. We still need to know that if I take two smaller segments, add them together, I'm going to get this larger segment. That is the segment addition postulate. So this is the justification of why I can write this. All right, now the next line, so if we're going from line one to line two, now instead of all these different letters for all the segments, now we got there, now we got these expressions, 2x, 3x minus 9, and 4x minus 4. So we're taking out the letters, and we're plugging in these expressions. So that kind of gives you a hint there on what this is going to be. This is going to be the substitution property. Substitution, if I can spell correctly, property, abbreviate that, of... Equality, substitution property of equality. Taking out the segment letters and then plugging in the expressions. Okay. Now after that, notice that we go from line 2 to line 3 down here. Now this 4x minus 4 over here doesn't change, but if you look over here, we have now we have 5x minus 9. The 9 didn't change, but these changed right here. Now this isn't necessarily a property... This is what we call simplifying. Now, there's two ways you can write this. We can, this is either called simplifying... Or, I actually like to call this combining like terms. Combining like terms. Combining like terms. That's what I usually like to call this, because that's what we did. We took the 2x and the 3x, added them together to get 5x. So that's, again, the justification for the step. That's what we did. All right, so now line 3 to line 4. Now, notice, uh, what did we do here? Now, one, one way to look at what we did here is try to find out what's absent, try to find out what's not there. So as I look here, there's a definite gap right here. This 4x is no longer there. So how did we get rid of it? Well, if you look to the other side, 5x became x. So it looks like we took the 4x and subtracted it over to the other side. Okay, we took the, we took the 4x and we subtracted it over to the other side. Let's look at what we did. It's going to disappear here over on the left side, but then over on the right side, we're going to get x. So notice the step that we did there. We subtracted from both sides. That's going to give us the justification of the subtraction, subtraction property of equality, subtraction property of equality. Okay, the steps that you take give you a, uh, a really big hint, really big hint on what your uh, property is going to be. Okay, so now again, now we're going from the see, one, two, three, four. We're on the fourth line to the fifth line, four to five, four to five. On the fourth line, again, let's see what's absent. Hmm, it's like that number changed, the x is still there, but then the negative 9 is absent. So it looks like what we did here is we actually added 9 to this side and added 9 to that side, because negative 4 and a positive 9 create a 5. So that makes sense, that makes sense what we did. Okay, and then this right here is going to make 0, so all I have left is the x. So it looks like we added to both sides. This is going to be the addition, the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality was that step right there. Okay, last but not least, now this one's a little odd. This one's a little odd looking. It looks like we just kind of flipped things around. X went on the left side, 5 went on the right side. Hmm, kind of an interesting property where we kind of switch things around. It's the same thing on the left, it's the same thing on the right. Okay, this would be the symmetric property. Symmetric, symmetric property of equality. Okay, so this one would be the symmetric property of equality. That says I can flip around the left and the right side of my equality and everything's going to stay the same. Um, when I was in high school, I was one of those kids who always wanted to write the variable first. I was one of those sticklers. I always had to have the variable first. It just, it made a whole lot more sense to have the variable first as opposed to having it second. I did, really didn't like
like to have that second. So I was able to move that around because of the symmetric property of equality. That allows me to be able to do that. Okay, just flip-flopping the sides of an equation. Alrighty, that's, uh, that's a couple of examples. Uh, solving an equation in al using algebra, okay, like an algebra proof, very simple algebra proof, and then also solving an equation in geometry using a tad bit of geometry um, to help us with this proof. Now notice the tad bit of geometry is right here, the segment addition postulate that we use. So the figure is a couple of segments up here, three segments in fact, small one here, small one there, and then the big segment when we add them together. Substitution property of equality, we use that for one of our steps. Now, simplifying and combining like terms. That one's a little bit different. That's not necessarily a property that you'll see all the time, um, but it is one of the steps that we are allowed to do. I like to say combining like terms because that's more of a mathematical um, steps. Uh, it's more of a mathy word to use. I like to use that a lot better. Okay, then we had the subtraction property of equality. We subtracted from both sides. We had the addition property property of equality when we added something to both sides and then we had the symmetric property where we flip-flopped these last two statements the five went to the right and the X went to the left okay we kind of flip-flopped everything all right so those are a couple of examples of of your your entry-level algebraic proofs